Hey guys, uh, it's Ashi Games here. We got Oliver over there. Hi. But it's mainly going to be me this video. Um, him. Today we're doing a review slash how to play of We're Doomed, the game of Global Panic. So if you open up the box, you'll see that there's like two compartments here. One has the hourglass in it. That's a small one. And the, oh, that should be going down. The other one has uh, the instructions, which you probably won't need to be a reading. Probably won't need to read, but they're still a good reference. I mean, you can, I mean, you would normally read them, but uh, you're watching this video. So that's the entire point. I don't have the event cards. Uh, let's go back here. Uh, um, you have the, like the um, player cards and their, and like the reference cards for each player, which you're gonna pass one of these out to each player. And then, depending on the number of people you have, uh, it will tell you on the thing. So see, this specific technocracy is for 10 plus players that each are listed on the card. There's multiple of each one. There might be one technocracy for a five player game or two technocracies for a 10 player game. Um, I don't know if you could see that. Just go there again. There, it says right here for a 10 player game and it says so again on the back. Um, this, uh, this game does require four players um, as well as um, some basic sense of reason. So they can't be super young, but I don't think, what, what's the age? What are the ages? It's like it's four to seven. It's like, a, I don't know. It doesn't say. I think, um, the, I think just like people seven and older. As long as they understand basic reasoning, they should be fine. Um, but you shouldn't have really smart people pitted against really stupid people because it does require a fair amount of strategy. Um, so these are not like special tokens or anything. They just hold the player cards. There, come on. Like yes. so. Um. So we have those, you have all this. Then also in the bag, you have um, the first player coin. That's the first player going in the round. And the two bags that are filled with this stuff. Oh, there's some stray pieces in here. Sorry. So you have the one with the production, I believe. Yes, I think so. And the um, influence bag. So, um, yeah, yeah, production. Oh, resources, sorry. Resource. Um, and basically, depending on how many players, as I mentioned before, you'll have specific um, players, or the specific types of governments, and um, basically, uh, if you're doing um, games past the first game, uh, it's the first player, actually just... In general, it's the first player to flip over the timer that gets to choose the character first, and that continues clockwise, Oliver? Yeah. It's clockwise, right? Yep. yep. Clockwise, on the table with players choosing each character, which different governments, and each government has a specific power. So here I have theocracy and technocracy. Um, and theocracy, if you can see, uh, the purple highlighted one, they get one day... Uh, indoctrinate, they get two influence instead of one, and the, techn uh, the technocracy, sorry, um, produces three instead of two. And on your turn, um, oh, actually, before any of that, um, what you're going to do is when the game starts, after you decide all of your characters, um, uh, each player is going to take the yes one influence and each player is going to take one influence um and so you take one influence at the beginning and then the game starts um on each player's turn starting with the player with the first player coin as i mentioned before first player flip it over for the first round um uh, you each take turns doing an ability, doing like um, a thing, like an ability, action. an action. 
basically. Um, so you see um, how each of these actions, you can make one of these actions on your turn. Um, uh, you can produce, indoctrinate, propagandize, invade, or nuke. And because each one has a special power, I'm not going to go over each individual um, each individual action because it's listed on the card and each one has a special ability, which makes it different than the others. So I'm not going to list all of them. But um, so you each do your action. It gets to the end of the round. Um, and then... Um, you, it's the time to build the rocket to escape Earth, because Earth is going to explode or crack open or something. Um, and since you've been able to do your actions, you should have, you may have some of these tokens here. If you can see them, I don't know if you can see them or not. Look like this. Um, so you're gonna take a bucket and Play, it does. It's not even turn based. Players are going to take turns, or not take turns. Sorry, I just said it wasn't taking turns. Um, or just going to chuck different amounts in the bucket. So imagine you want to donate one. You would put it in and say one. But then if somebody else is all like, "Oh, I really want to win," and they're all like, "Okay, I'll put in two, two. So you can change yours and put in two more, saying three. No, and the rest of the players don't put in any. Um, then after that would happen, I'm taking them out because I'm just telling you how to play. But normally you would keep them in unless, uh, uh, you normally you would keep them in. And um, the person that had the most in there by the end um, would... By the end of like the contribution phase. By the end of the contribution phase, the contribution place while I was described, um, uh, gets the first player token, so that means they go first for the next round. And they also draw the event card. So let's see, I want to draw, there's two types of event cards, so I'm gonna find two, the one of each type. So, the, two of these. Aha! Here's the other type. You have, um, at, uh, event cards add special little scenarios to the game. So, uh, this one is a white card, so it's public, and everybody, um, and you read it to everybody, uh, and this one is hazardous materials, um, uh, basically it means place this card face up in front of another player of your choice. If this player's skin comes into contact with resources, they are eliminated. Additionally, anybody who physically interferes with this player's handling of resources is eliminated. So basically, what that means is you put it in front of another player, you're going to choose, and then they can't touch it. Um, can't touch, like, the resources, or, like, yeah, if they cut, if they touch any of the resources with their, or and they can wear gloves, they can like put their hand in their sleeves to touch it. As long as their skin doesn't actually touch it, then they're fine. But if they do, then they're out. So there's all sorts of funny little events in here. And then the other type is called the clandestine. It, they're the black cards. And basically it just means that only, like read it to yourself. This one is countermeasures. You may discard this card after playing, after a player launches a nuke, which is um, an ability you can, which is uh, not an ability, sorry, an action you can do on your turn to prevent anybody from being eliminated by it. So basically, uh, if somebody plays the nuke action, which would eliminate another player um, for a certain amount of resources, um, then basically you can play this card, which you've been holding in your hand the whole time, and be all like, nope, uh, that. The nuke does not do anything, and you cancel it, basically. So, that's just so, a few, like, a small amount of examples of what the events can be like. Um, some of them are funny, like the uh, skin coming into contact one. There's one where I think it has to stay on your head for a certain period of time. 
there's one where basically you press certain buttons and you can't take your hand off. So I don't have the a lot of them are pretty cool. Oh, I am missing this one apparently. Um so that's basically how the game works. Um you have to follow the events, do this stuff, and oh yes, and every time I miss something. If another player wins a contribution phase, gets the first player conjure that event card, they also take one influence. Um, and how influence and resources work is you need these these resources here to do stuff. You need them to you need them to launch nukes. You need them for a contribution. You just need them for all sorts of stuff. And then the influence basically gets you on board the rocket. Um, so if there's not enough seats for all the players that can go, then basically the person with the most, the people with the most influence would go before the people with the least influence if somebody needs to be left behind. Um, so resources, I'm going to quote this from the other video by the Word Game Company, or uh, I don't remember what it's called, Breaking Games, I think. Um, resources build the rocket, influence gets you on board. Black is influence, white is resources. I think you, I might have already said that. Um, so, what happens is the contribution phase is what I was talking about earlier, the one that gets you the uh, first player coin and the event cards, um, also builds the rocket. So, as here it is, um, the, at the end of the game, you tally up the resources that have been contributed and here's a little clip of it here. And this is how many P players it gets on board. So 40 is one, 50 is two, 60 is three, and so on. Um, so if you have enough for all the players, great, you all win the end. But if you don't, if there's not going to be enough, if it, by the end, if what happens in this game is pretty cool. That's one of the reasons I like it. Uh, at, the, at the beginning of the game, uh, what I find normally happens is everybody's all like, guys, we're gonna do this right, we're gonna all get on the rocket, we're gonna, con we're all gonna make it, but as it gets further along, it comes into play that it's not gonna work and nobody, and not everybody can donate re enough resources to get on board. So, people immediately switch their strategies and start getting influence or start trying to nuke other players and get them out and stuff like that. Um, and the game can totally switch its vertices um, near the end, which is pretty fun. And um, if you, as for the rating part of this game, um, by the times I've played it, it is very fun. Um, it can be hard to find players, it's, uh, even in my family, which is which has enough players to do to go over Sometimes it can be hard to find players as you need four just to play it. Um, and five to get the theocracy option, or technocracy, sorry. Um, I would rate this probably four out of five stars. It's a very fun game. Um, uh, it, it only takes like 15 minutes. That's how long the, time, the stand timer is set for. Um, it's very well crafted, breaking games. Um, I haven't had that many of their games, but by my experience, they're a great games company. So, I love breaking games, such a good company. Um, love it. It's good, everything's fine. I think you should play this game. Uh, not sponsored, not sponsored or anything, but um, it is a great game, and maybe it's for you, maybe it's not. Anyways, this is Oliver and Asher signing out.